As you can tell by the title and the way the airplane's pointing, this video is about crosswind landings. Using live weather, I found the windiest airport I could find in Flight Sim 2020, and I'm going to show you some techniques to make crosswind landings easier. This airport is Laramie, Wyoming, if you're curious, and the winds are out of the southwest at approximately 25 gusting to 30 knots. There are two parts to this exercise crabbing into the wind, and the second part using a combination of aileron and rudder to keep the airplane parallel with the center line of the runway. In the first part, as we get over the center line of the runway, we're just going to crab the nose of the airplane into the wind. We're simulating what we're doing on final approach. So as we are crabbing into the wind, if we're to the right of the center line, we need to turn to the left more and increase our crab angle. If we start going to the left side of the center line, we don't have too much of a crab, but we need to turn to the right and decrease some of that angle. All we're trying to do is maintain a constant parallel track with the center line. Practice this exercise and the next one multiple times. So we obviously can't land the airplane crabbed into the wind that much. That would do damage to the airplane, tires, who knows. When we do touch down, we need the nose of the airplane parallel with the center line of the runway. To do that, we point the ailerons into the wind and use opposite rudder to keep the nose parallel with the center line of the runway. Practice going up and down the runway using this method multiple times. So here in this situation, we are right of the center line, but I actually ran out of rudder. So if you were in this situation, you still had a rudder and aileron available, you would turn to the left more and then counteract that with right rudder. So if you use more aileron, you're going to use more rudder, and vice versa. So what do you do if you do run out of rudder? Is there anything we can do in an extremely strong crosswind? The answer is yes, and that's next. So if this is the only runway available, one thing we can do in an extreme crosswind situation is increase the effectiveness of our flight controls. And we can do that by increasing our airspeed. That helps in two ways. One way, the faster we're going, the less crab correction we're going to need with the wind. And the second, by going faster, we're essentially making our flight controls bigger and more effective. On final approach, I personally crab into the wind. During the flare, I will use rudder and aileron in combination to make the center line of the airplane parallel with the center line of the runway. And as you slow down, fine adjustments will need to be made to maintain the center line. I'm actually using full rudder right now. I can turn into the wind, but if I do that, the center line of the airplane is not going to be parallel with the center line of the runway. One thing to keep in mind is very important when doing crosswind landings. When you touch down, the aileron stays pointing into the wind. Do not take it out. If you do, this will happen. You can see the airplane tipping to the right, and I've slowed this down so you can see it better. And as I said earlier, the best way to do this is to practice it multiple times. Do the first method, crabbing into the wind, then do the second method using aileron and rudder to make the airplane parallel with the center line of the runway. Also in a crosswind landing, be sure to hold the aileron into the wind and when you touch down, the upwind tire will touch first. So if the wind's off your left side, your left main's gonna touch first. You can see as we touch down, I've got full right rudder. I can't do any more correction whatsoever. As we touch down, the left main touches, then the right, then the airplane tips over because of the strong crosswind. When I went back and filmed that part, the winds had increased to 44 knots, and using that runway, that was a 44 knot direct crosswind. In real life, I definitely would not land on that runway in a 172. I would go and use the runway directly into the wind or go someplace else. Thank you for watching.